You have within you a guidance system that lets you know in every moment how well you are tending to your connection between who you are and who you are. You are source energy in a physical body. And when you allow yourself to be the source energy that you really are, you radiate confidence, you radiate clarity, you radiate love, you radiate well-being, you thrive. You are well-balanced, you have flexibility, your body is thriving, your mind is clear, your words flow easily, you feel really good, you laugh often, you love easily, you appreciate much, you thrive in all manner of being. When you allow yourself to be who you are, you thrive. And you don't worry about somebody else thriving and getting your thriver. <laughs> you don't see someone else thriving and worry that, oh, they're thriving too much. They're going to use up the stream of thrive. <laughs> Instead, you understand that thriving is about connection, and connection is about alignment, and alignment is about tending to the way you feel. It's about thinking thoughts and acknowledging the way the thought feels and then adjusting the thoughts so that it helps you to line up you with you. We love seeing you here in these physical bodies, recognizing the guidance system that is within you. We want to talk about that here today because we see so many of our friends who are physical humans who are setting aside the guidance that comes forth from within and trying to replace it with someone else's version of what they ought to be doing. And what happens with that is that there are so many others who have different opinions about what you ought to be doing, which adds to the confusion of the vibrational mix that you're offering. One says, go this way. One says, go this way. One says, this is better. Another says, this is better. And what almost all of you fail to recognize, and this is the most astonishing thing of all, is that every one of them is speaking about what they think you should do to satisfy their personal perspective. So in essence, what they're saying is, you should set aside your personal perspective and you should follow mine, which matters more. And we say, or not. <laughs> Nobody's perspective matters more than yours because nobody can tend to your vibrational countenance. Nobody can adjust the vibration of you. Nobody else has their hand on the lever or on the valve that controls the degree to which you allow your alignment or not. And when you let someone else guide you so that you're not paying attention to your own alignment with source, you can get mixed upside down and all around to the degree that you do not know what to think about anything, and then you're just listening to the loudest voice. And the loudest voice, we've got to tell you, can get pretty obnoxious because that loudest voice always comes from a basis of fear. The loudest voice never comes from this place of security and acknowledging freedom and alignment with source energy. The loudest voice always comes from the place of the greatest fear. And then you listen to the loudest voice that is coming from the place of the greatest fear. And then you wonder why things are not working out so well when you follow the loudest voice. And we're wanting you to understand that it's not the loudest voice, it's the consistent voice. It's the voice that does not waver. It's the voice that never stops saying to you, you are worthy, and you are love, and you are well-being, and you deserve to live well. It's the voice that never stops saying, well-being abounds, and source energy flows. And if you will work to align with the vibration that feels like that, you must thrive. And no one can ever take your thriving away from you. No one can take your freedom away from you. But freedom is a perceived thing because freedom is the way you feel in response to the vibration that you've activated, which comes in response to what you're choosing to think about. In other words, there's this emotional scale. We like to call it the vibrational or emotional scale. And it is the cornerstone of your awareness of your connection with that which is your source. It's the way you feel. On one extreme, you feel empowered. On the other extreme, you feel disempowered. On the one extreme, you feel love and joy. On the other extreme, you feel depressed. And when you think about it, these emotions that range from love and passion and appreciation and joy that might move into more resistant stages of optimism or hopefulness or pessimism that might move even into more resistant stages of frustration and overwhelmment, which might move into even more resistant stages of anger or more feelings of disempowerment that you might call discouragement or fear, or even more 
that you might call depression or true disempowerment, notice that those emotions on this emotional scale all are about your perception of freedom or lack thereof. When you feel fear, isn't the basis of that fear that you are feeling disempowerment? Aren't you acknowledging that the fear that you are feeling has at its basis a feeling that somebody else has the power to do something to you that you don't want? Isn't disempowerment at the heart of all negative emotion? It is. The feeling that my freedom is being subverted or taken from me is at the heart of all negative emotion. A child who rebels is someone who has been convinced that he is not free, who is born with desire and knowledge of his absolute freedom and somehow something has happened and he doesn't feel free and he's making his best effort at gaining his freedom back. And we say, good for you, we'd throw off it too. If we perceived ourselves not to be free, it would be equivalent to having someone press a pillow over one of your faces when you need oxygen to survive. In other words, you cannot bear the perception that you are not free. But we want you to understand that freedom or lack of it is only a perception, and we know that there are those who would argue. But you've got to look at the bigger picture, and you've got to understand where it starts. You cannot ever not be free when you know you are. Because when you know you are free, no one can frighten you. When you know you are free, no one can motivate you to action from a place of fear. When you know you are free, you stand in a vibration of freedom. You emanate a strong signal of freedom. Law of attraction sets up circumstances and events that confirm your freedom, and you are free. But physical humans want to approach freedom in the same way that they want to approach so many things. They say, show me the circumstance, and then I'll respond to it. So somehow orchestrate circumstances and events that convince me that I'm free or convince me that things are going well. And once you've shown me the circumstances and events, then I will look at these good circumstances and events and I will feel better. And we say, you have it so backwards because what you're saying is, give me the result which has to be created from vibration and then I'll have a vibrational response to the result. And we say, that can't be. You've got to find a way of evoking from yourself the vibration that matches the response that you want to get. You can't say, I'll feel so much better when I get over there, so please put me over there, and then I'll feel better. We say, you've got to feel better where you are, and then you'll get over there. You've got to change your vibrational response to what you're observing. And the only way we know that anyone could live in a world with so much variety and so much antagonism, and so much pushing against, and so much evidence of stuff not wanted, is to look at the overwhelming evidence of what is wanted. Somehow, you've become convinced that if you look at the thing that you do not want, there's a war on drugs, and a war on terrorism, and a war on cancer, and a war on AIDS, and a war on terrorism, and a war on teenage pregnancy, and a war on terrorism. In other words, and these things that you are pushing against, you are activating in the consciousness of all with whom you speak about it. And then, law of attraction brings you more of the very thing you are pushing against because, and here is the key, When you activate something in your vibration, you become the magnetic attractor of that which you have activated. You cannot set your radio dial on 6.30 a.m. and hear what's being broadcast on 98.6 FM. The frequencies are different. And you cannot set your radio dial on terrorism and attract well-being. You cannot set your radio dial on not enough money and attract more money. You cannot set your radio dial on the diagnosis the doctor gave me and attract well-being. In other words, you can't do it. You have to line up with what you want. It's not as hard as it sounds. In fact, it's so simple that people don't hear it often. The path to what you want always feels good. The path to what you don't want always feels bad. Now, why would you think otherwise? Think about it. Think about why or how it is possible for anyone to get crossways of the guidance that they were born with, with the guidance that is at the core of that which you are. How could you get crossways of understanding that if it feels good, you're moving in the direction of that which will please you when it gets there, and if it feels bad, you're moving in the direction of something that will feel bad when it gets there? How could you get crossways of that? because someone outside of you convinced you that your feelings don't matter. 
They said, never mind how you feel, I know better. I have it on authority. I have better reports. I have better statistics. I know better than you do what's good for you. And we say, no one knows better than you do what's good for you because nobody else has their hand on the lever of the valve of the connection between you and your resources. Nobody else can do that. But if you let somebody else convince you that they know better so that you follow what they think, all you're doing is satisfying their selfish nature instead of your own. And we know how you do that. You've demonized the idea of selfishness. You say it's altruistic to be unselfish. And we say... If you're not selfish enough to tend to your own connection to source, you have nothing to give. You have nothing to give. 